Hey guys, Chad here for Kayak Bass Fishing. Today I am going to tell you how to select a kayak fishing paddle and how to paddle with a kayak fishing paddle. Okay, so one of the things that is interesting, frustrating, whatever you want to call it, if you've been doing what I've done for as long as I do it, is you see people out on the water and they have their paddle upside down. Nine times out of 10, you can tell a paddle's upside down because the company puts the logo on there right side up. So if you look over and your logo's upside down, so is your paddle. You might ask yourself, Chad, what does it matter if my paddle's upside down? Well, the reason that it matters is because paddles are designed with a certain shape and a certain design to produce the most power uh, and then the least, the most resistance on the other side. So the paddle is not symmetrical uh, from the center out. So you've got more volume on the bottom part. And so when you go through the water, it's a lot like uh, a spoon that you're picking up cereal with, right? If you do it backwards, you're not picking that cereal up. It's like you wouldn't try to eat cereal by turning your spoon upside down and sticking it in the water or in the milk and go, uh -oh. Uh -oh. it just wouldn't work. So why would you paddle with your paddle backwards or upside down? Because you're not going to get the amount of power and resistance that you, um, that you should be getting from it, especially if you buy a higher end paddle and you're paying for that performance. So in a lot of cases, I'm going to bring you guys solutions at different price points. I'm doing that back to the basics um, scenario like I'm uh, doing with Christy, and we're going to tell you about the different price points. I'm going to stick to my guns on this one and tell you to buy the best possible paddle that you can buy, and here's why. If you buy a paddle that is sub $100, you're probably not gonna get the best quality paddle. Even right at that $100 to $139 range, for example, the Bend and Branches Angler Scout or even moving on up into the Classic, that paddle's gonna be good for a couple of years and you know it may even be good forever, right? Depending on what your budget is. But you can't go wrong with an investing like a paddle like that because you can always turn it into a buddy paddle, the one that you loan out to somebody or a backup uh, down the road. But you're really going to want to spend as much as you can on the best possible paddle that you can get because it could become a lifetime investment. And I'm going to show you why this paddle, if you buy this paddle and buy a paddle like this, regardless of whether or not you go with bending branches or one that has these features, uh, it could be the only paddle that you ever need. And uh, so you're going to want to go as light as you can because for the most part, you're holding this paddle out in front of you, right? And so the swing weight is what matters more than the shake weight, right? You see guys at the shop or in a kayak store, they pick the thing up. And like, I'm gonna be honest with you, I can't ever see myself like doing the shake weight thing, you know, just using the shake weight. You guys remember the shake weight? So, so but you see guys at, at kayak stores, they'll take it off the rack and then they go, like what? <laughs> I don't know what this really, like what does that do? That doesn't tell you anything about it. Okay, that doesn't tell you anything about the weight of a paddle holding the paddle out in front of your body and kind of going through the motion of how you're going to use the paddle, that tells you what the swing weight is, how that paddle is going to feel. So I say buy the lightest paddle that you can afford within your budget, but there's this thing called stair-stepping in gear, okay? You can pay $800 for a $400 paddle, and let me tell you how. If you buy a $100 paddle, and then later on you buy a $200 paddle, and then later on you buy a $300 paddle, Three plus two is five, plus one is six. Now, if you then decide to go on and pay for a $400 paddle, you've paid $1,100 for that. Wait, was that right? No, a thousand. You've paid a thousand dollars for that $400 paddle. So a lot of people, I call them the whistle dam, right? They pick up a paddle, man, that's nice. How much does that cost? Uh, $389, <whistles> damn, right? That's a whistle dam. So if it's out of your price range, it's out of your price range. And listen, I'm just going to tell you, I'm a professional at this. I do it all the time. I spend 300 plus days on the water. So I'm going to spend the money to get the best possible product that I can. Speaking of the spend the money, best possible product, I want to make a little public service announcement right here about myself and about my brand. I use the products. I'm sponsored by the products that I use. I don't use this pro products because I'm sponsored. So with almost 10 years on national television and uh, writing a book and owning a website and a business and all that other kind of stuff, like to be honest with you, at the position that I'm in and the position I put myself in, I can pretty much be sponsored by, you know, dang near anybody I want to. So the argument that, oh, you're only saying that because you're paid by them is kind of silly because I could really get paid by anybody 
to say it. So I choose the products that I really believe in. I believe in the products that I use, and then I figure out a way to get those guys to sponsor me. It's called the American dream. You too can live that dream. So anyway, I'll get off of my uh, soapbox for that. So back to what I was saying. Buy the best paddle that you can buy, because if not, you're going to spend your way up to that nice paddle. And you're going to spend way more on that paddle than you would have spent on that paddle if you just bought the right paddle in the first place. So let's talk about the right paddle in the first place. Because you're using different seat heights, because you're using different kayak widths, because the kayak design, you know, revolution or evolution is still going on, you don't really know what paddle you're going to need down the road and you don't know that you're going to change from one boat to another or, or pursue a different type of fishing so spend a little bit extra money to get what i what, what bending branches refers to as the plus and what that means is that paddle can adjust okay it just simply goes together it's a lot like a painter's pole you slide it together and there's a mechanism inside a mechanism inside that allows you to adjust that paddle to different feather angles to different lengths lengths and feather angles and so for me this is the way that i go because i like to have my knife edge to the wind when i'm paddling right in a, in a windstorm. I like to have it flat when I'm what I call tiptoeing through the flats. I like to flip it upside down when I'm paddling in ve vegetation. I like to have it short when I'm trying to go fast so I can do a vertical stroke down the side of the kayak. When I'm maneuvering, I like to have it long so I can get further out away from the kayak. I'll talk about that in a second when I talk about how to paddle. But when I've got a paddle that will allow me to adjust it, I can actually on the fly look down, make a quick adjustment, and I can go from paddling efficiency to boat management position efficiency by simply changing the length of the paddle pretty much on demand. Look at a guide mark, boom, lock it in place, and I'm good. If I want to add a feather to it and I want to extend it, I extend it out, I line up my guide mark, boom, and lock it, and it's good. So to me, the paddle is worth the extra investment to get the ability to adjust the length. If I'm in a high position, I want a long paddle. If I'm in a low position of a, of a fishing kayak seat, I want a shorter paddle. Uh, if I want to maneuver, I want it longer. If I want more efficiency, I want a vertical paddle stroke. So that's one of the things to consider when you consider purchasing a paddle. You might sell your boat 10, 12, 15 times, upgrade, 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 but you still can use the same paddle. So I would say buy a cheaper kayak first and a better paddle versus buying a really high-end kayak and a cheap paddle. I just would. I mean, that's honestly uh, just me. So I'm going to stop my public service announcement, and now I'm going to tell you about paddling, okay? So one of the things that sucks for us as kayak fishermen is that most of the paddling information that's out there is out there for what I call true paddlers or paddlers that are paddling sea kayaks or sit inside kayaks where they're inside the kayak, okay? They don't have a high back seat. And so when they paddle, they're taking the paddle and inserting the paddle for a clean catch. Don't break the box. Rotate your upper torso. Follow through and look at your blade as it comes out of the water. Rotate your torso for the opposite catch. You want to follow all the way through. Yeah, that all works unless you've got a fishing PFD on and a high back seat and a kayak that doesn't allow you to do that. So let me tell you specifically how to paddle a fishing kayak. You're gonna wanna decide, do you want a feather or do you not want a feather? I personally like to take my kayak paddle and I like to bring it back to 45 degrees right Okay, I like to line that up with a guide mark and I like to lock it in place. That's going to give me a slight offset between the blades. If you see that blade and you see the one behind me, okay. Here's the basic fundamental of how to paddle. If you're sitting in the kayak, lay it across your lap and get your arms just outside of your, of your thighs, okay? And to set the paddle stroke up correctly, think to yourself in your head, which hand do you throw a baseball with? It might be some time since you've done that, okay? So you might have to think about it. Which hand do I throw with again? <laughs> or which hand do you eat with? It's also the same hand you wipe your butt with for the most part. That is going to be what we call the glue hand. So you're going to take that hand and you're going to line it up with the blade, okay? You're going to line those knuckles up, okay? You see what I'm doing here? I'm lining those knuckles up. I'm lining my knuckles up with the blade, okay? If you don't understand this concept of as, as I'm explaining it, you're not smart enough to fish out of a fishing kayak. You should probably take up pinochle or badminton or something else because if you don't understand line your knuckles up with the paddle blade I can't help you okay anyway so here we go so that hand is the glue hand that's the hand that you're gonna not doesn't let doesn't it's glue it's as if you glued your hand to the paddle that's why we're calling it the glue hand hey Chad why you call that hand the glue hand it's as if you put glue all over your hand and then grab the paddle blade and let it dry it's your glue hand okay so then the opposite of glue is grease. So this is your grease hand, okay? So your grease hand is the hand that you're gonna let it flow. You're gonna let it slide as if 
you put grease on your hand, and then you grabbed your paddle blade. Some of you out there might need to actually put glue on one hand and glue it to the paddle blade, and then put grease on the other hand and grease, oh, <laughs> I get But most of you are just gonna be able to simply follow my direction. So again, line that up, knuckles. Take this one and put it on there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna reach for the catch on your paddle stroke, okay? Now, proper paddling technique, we'll talk about it in a different video when it comes to sitting in the side of the kite, but I wanna to talk to you about the overview, okay? For years and years and years and years and years, I thought, I'm not a paddler, I'm a fisherman. But what I realized is I paddle as much, if not more than I fish, so I should probably invest some time in becoming a better paddler. So when you reach out and you slide your paddle into the water, that's called the catch. So you slide that paddle out. I like to open my hand up for the catch. Boom, slide the paddle blade in. And then as I'm bringing it back, I close my hand, okay, softly. I'm gonna pull with the bottom hand, I'm gonna push with the top hand. As that blade passes about my hip, I'm gonna start to seek the surface. What I like to do is, as I start to seek the surface, I like to turn the blade a little bit knife edge so that when it comes out in the back back there, it's knife edge. I don't like to go and just pull it up like it sounds like a reverse toilet flush, okay? So some of this is about paddling technique, but some of it's about stealth and not spooking the fish that you're trying to catch. Because if you're like oh, 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 into the spot, you're probably not gonna catch any fish when you get there because you said, ding, 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 I'm coming. It's no different than rolling up into a flat with your trolling motor on high, dropping pliers, running into stumps, and then expecting to catch a fish. So if you wanna be stealthy, you have to think stealthy. The kayak's not just like automatically default stealth. There's no stealth mode switch, right? You gotta think about it. So you bring that paddle back, rotate it, and I like to look where I'm going instead of looking at my paddle blade. So that's one of the techniques that they teach you in you know, high-end paddling classes. Follow your paddle blade with your head. No, I think I'm gonna keep my eye on that nine pounder lining behind that stump so that if it swims somewhere else, I know where it went and I can adjust accordingly. So as that paddle blade comes behind you, you wanna knife edge it to bring it out of the water. And then you're gonna, this hand is the, the grease hand, right? So you're gonna loosen this hand up, slide that hand in. Now this is the fulcrum. You're gonna pull with that blade, pull and rotate. On this hand, I almost just keep it open. Rotate against that inner part of my hand right there. Boom, same thing, grease, glue, grease, glue. Rotate with this hand, boom, 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 boom. See, this is the hand that I'm loosening up. This hand I never loosen up. Now, for the most part, to set this up properly, line those knuckles up, loosen this hand up, get that stance. Don't worry about breaking the box because you're not gonna be following your blade. You're gonna be following your prey. You're gonna be watching where you're going. You're gonna make sure you're not running into a treetop because if you're running a treetop here, you shake the treetop 60 feet away and spook everything in the flat. So you're gonna be stealthy, okay? You're gonna think stealthy. One of the things about paddling a fishing kayak is you're gonna pull and you're gonna push with your upper hand, okay? In some instances, you're gonna use your torso, but for the most part, you're just, you're just getting going. Once you get that glide going, so what I like to do is rotate my torso and my power strokes, and once I get that glide going, it's like I'm just tiptoeing. And then I like to do what I call a rudder drag. So if I wanna steer my boat to the left, I see a lot of people go like this, and they're paddling on one side trying to get their boat to go to the left, paddling real hard on the right side. What I like to do is if I know I want my nose to come to the left, I'll stick my paddle blade in, I'll paddle it. Halfway through the paddle stroke, if I decide I want my nose to go there, I don't have to go, oh, and then start to do this crap. I see that happen all the time. I really wish I had the time to do a drone shot and show this to you, but I think you can visualize it. Okay, so you bring your blade back, all right? What you do is when you start to turn it knife age, instead of taking it out of the water, just turn it and then let that drift go, and then all you have to do is rudder with your paddle blade. So if I wanna go left, I'm gonna go left, I'm gonna just take that paddle blade, I'm gonna to come to the back, and I'm gonna go like this, and if I wanna go right, I'm gonna push away from the boat. If I wanna go left, I'm just gonna hold it out there and kinda of bring it in, and I'm gonna turn my blade, and that's gonna get me, the water flow up and over this is gonna create a slight turn, and then all I gotta do is modulate that turn. Now one of the things you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind is too many people make an adjustment, the boat starts coming, they don't take it out, and then the next cast, they're way over here. So now you gotta paddle the blade all the way. So if you manage the nose of your boat, if you watch where that nose is going, make slight adjustments as you're going. Stop, take out. So if you're going like this and you overshoot and you're like, oh, I can't take it out, just make another quick slow stroke and go like this and just push out. That'll keep your nose from coming around. If you do those three or four little simple things, if you buy the best paddle 
that you can buy up front. If you invest a little bit of time in learning how to pedal, paddle <laughs> properly, properly, especially if you're not a pedal kayaker, which pedal kayaks are fine. I like to be stealthy. Uh, if the, uh, a great pedal drive is ever made, I'll probably be one of the first things to line up. I just don't like giving up my cockpit. We'll get into that in a separate video. What we're talking about here is paddling, okay? And somebody, somewhere, at some time, even in the best pedal drive or motor-driven kayak out there, is going to have to paddle, so you should learn how to do it correctly. So this is a Bend and Branches Carbon Pro Plus. I think any of the Pro Series and the Plus or the Ace are really sound investments. I think once you go below the Ace uh, in the Bend and Branches line, at some point in your life, you're going to want to upgrade. So unless you're buying a backup paddle or a buddy paddle uh, and you want to have that extra paddle down the road, don't spend thousand dollars on a four hundred dollar paddle just uh, save up and get that four hundred dollar paddle uh, from the get-go if you're not just go ahead and buy like a two by four and whittle yourself out a paddle and use one of those like you know that type um, before we go though I do have one question for you um, as you might be able to tell um, I'm starting to dress different I'm rounding that two-year corner of being married and Christy's starting to take an active role in putting my clothes out so I need you guys to do me a favor and comment in the comment section. Is it acceptable for a non-metrosexual male to wear shoes and shirts that match? I mean, I know I look good no matter what I wear, but the question is, I mean, shoes and shirt that match? Come on, really? If I saw myself wearing this two years ago, I think I would kick my own butt straight up. Or I'd just look at myself and shake my head at myself. Shaking my head at myself. Shaking my head at my head. Well, anyway, you know what I'm saying. Love you guys, I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>